Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So in the last couple of videos, we've seen how we can leverage JavaScript in our application server layer, but we've been using XSO data and XSJS, which is really, um, particularly XSJS, a, a simplified programming model, still using the core JavaScript language, but not tapping into the complete power of what we're going to refer to as pure Node.js. And for this next set of exercises, we want to switch over and begin to use the full capabilities of Node.js. This is pretty typical of a, of a real XS Advanced application. You probably have some parts of it where you migrated from XS Classic and, and you still want to use XSJS. Maybe you got some other parts that still need OData v2, and then you need the XSJS compatibility layer for XSO data. Maybe you have some parts where you just only need the simplified programming model of XSJS. But increasingly, big parts of your application could be written in pure Node.js. And, and really, we're going to show you some of the major technological advantages that, that you have access to once you begin to tap into the full power of Node.js. But as we transition into this pure Node.js topic, we also want to go back and revisit the, t uh, the topic of core data and services. If you remember all the way back in the Hello World video when we first created our project, the wizard generated a service module for us as well. And that is, it was a Node.js module. And we talked early on about how we could use core data and services not only to define tables, uh, and views, but also then to expose those as, as OData services. And it works in a very similar way to the way that we just did in the previous exercises where we um, created an XS OData document and took an existing table or view and turned it into an OData service. Here it's even simpler in, um, in core data and services because if our entity is already defined in, uh, you know, for its creation at the database level, we can just reuse that immediately. We don't have to redefine associations like we did in, in XSO data. The other technological advantage that we get with this approach is that core data and services, well, first of all, uh, when we're using the Node.js version uh, of the service enablement, it's OData v4. So it's the latest and greatest uh, OData version. But as we'll see a little bit later, it also has full, full support for defining our Fury annotations as well. So if you want to build uh, a really advanced Fury application uh, with an adaptive UI, we now have single syntax in the form of this new version of Core Data and Services that allows us to do that. So let's, uh, let's return to the Web IDE. And uh, if you remember back the wizard, uh, when we first ran our project wizard, it created our DB module and our SRV module. And we haven't really done much with this F SRV module. It's got a CDS file in it. And if you remember, we actually had to take some of the sample content out to get our project to, to build correctly. But what we'd like to do now in this video is go ahead and build out this uh, CDS file in the service module uh, to create some OData v4 services. Now, before we do that, we're going to have to go back to our MTA YAML and actually extend it a little bit uh, to add some more uh, features to our service module. When the, uh, when the wizard started off, uh, it did create the service module, but it didn't connect up um, to our UAA service because we mainly added that UAA service. And of course, we're going to want security on the service module as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and add that in here. Let's just add our UAA resource as a dependency as well. And the other thing that we're going to need to do uh, now that we have um, now that we have the service module with security, we're going to want to run it through the web module just like we did our XSJS module in the previous exercises. So we're going to want to come here to the web module and add its provider in here as well. Just like we have the XSJS API provider, we want to come here and find the SRV API provider. And we'll have to extend the information here as well. We have to add destinations and then some 
properties. So we want to add a name. We'll give it the same name just like we did with our XSJS API. And a URL variable. So we'll bring in the built-in variable for the URL. So we're not coding any URLs. And just like we did with our XSJS, we want to forward the auth te token, of course, so we get our security uh, passed in from the web module into our uh, SRV module or our Node.js service module as well. So let's save that. We can go to the code editor real quick. Let's just double check and make sure this looks good. Uh, so what we have here, we have the requires. We've added our UAA service and our web module. Now, in addition to forwarding to the XSJS API, also can forward to the uh, SRV API. And that all looks good. Now, what we need to do is um, we want to actually go into this My Service CDS and we want to see how we can define OData services. So I've got a little code snippet prepared for that, and then we'll look at uh, what that does. So let's grab this, bring it in. So what are we doing here? Basically, we can import the existing entity definitions from the data model uh, just using this using command. So we want to create uh, an OData service that contains the purchase order header and the purchase order items. Uh, so we don't want to redefine the entities at this level. They are, they're already defined up here in the DB module and then uh, DB data model, which in turn, they're in the purchase order, but we don't have to go directly there. We'll go to uh, DB, which imports them from the uh, purchase order. So we have our headers and our items. That's what we're bringing in here, headers and items, uh, giving it a, a shorter alias name. We can do that as headers, as items. And then if we want to create a OData service, we have to say service. And inside there, we take the entities. And what we're doing is we're kind of extending the entities because uh, I'm saying entity POs as projection on headers. So it's going to take the header entity and it's going to create a, a, a service entity as a projection on the existing entity. So that way we don't have to redefine the columns and the data types, they'll, they'll be in, inherited. So that's the other thing that you see um, with this new version of Core Data and Services. We'll see it later with the Fiori annotations as well. There's, there's, a, there's really a, a mechanism for inheritance, um, and that's a bit what we're doing here. And we can, over, uh, we can add additional annotations here. Now we're not going to do a whole lot. We'll go ahead and add a title uh, to our service and we can also uh, control which operations are available. By default uh, the read operation is available but we can also say whether we want to allow insert, update, and delete as well. And you can imagine if you had a view maybe, uh, maybe as your source maybe you wouldn't want to allow uh, insert, update, or delete. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add that uh, and allow that here. All right. Um, next, um, what we can do is do our build CDS. And earlier, when we did the build CDS, I'll show you what it's doing here. Uh, when all we had was database artifacts, it of course took our .cds files and it broke them down and created uh, HDB CDS files in this gen folder. In the service module. When we take the uh, and do the build CDS, it takes CDS and it creates a similar gen folder, but inside here is a CSN JSON. Uh, and it's really just the metadata and links to where we can uh, extract the metadata uh, to, uh, to run our services. We really don't have to mess with this. I, I just point out to you to let you know that it was what was generated. I, I never really go in here and look at it or, or do anything with it. Okay. Um, Next, we added our service module to our web module in the MTA YAML, but of course, we're also going to have to extend our XS app JSON now. 
uh, add routes. Uh, you know, we have our two existing routes that allow us to go for XSJS and XSO data, but we're going to need some new routes here that also has our um, Node.js services in it. So let's uh, just cut and paste the entire thing here, and then I'll, I'll talk to you about it. So we still have our XSJS and XSO data rules, but we've added some new rules here, forward slash catalog, and then anything that begins uh, the path, the URL path with forward slash catalog, will route then to the uh, SRV API. Anything that has forward slash OData v4 in it for our OData v4 services, that's going to route here. And just setting up, we're not going to do it in this exercise, but preparing us for subsequent exercises, we're also going to create some custom Node.js services, just like we had custom XSJS services. And they're all going to run under this path forward slash node. Uh, and those will route to SRV API, uh, but we'll still have our XSJS and XSO data. Uh, the order that you list the routes is also important. The first one that matches the criteria is the one that will be processed, and it doesn't keep looking. You won't get multiple uh, forwards. Um, so that's why you know our XSJS is looking for the file extension. That's pretty, um, it's pretty generic. Uh, so I tend to put the most generic ones toward the bottom and the more specific ones towards the top. Um, so that is good now. And what we can do, I'll save this, and we want to run the SRV module now. If you were to try to run the web module at this point, you would actually get an error um, because we've added the SRV module as a dependency to the web module. And if all the dependent modules are not already running, when it tries to start up, it's going to error out. Uh, so that's a, that's a common mistake that some people uh, make sometimes. Um, I will start the SRV module. And because it's the first time that it's deploying, it has to do a full deploy, of course. So this will take uh, take a little bit to start up. There we see it has fully deployed. It has started. Now, the other thing that we need to do is uh, we need to restart the web module. We made changes to its dependencies and the XS app JSON. So of course, when I restart this, it's going to have to do a full redeploy as well. And it's finished its redeploy and launched the web module. And just to show you that some of the stuff is still working, obviously, if we go to index HTML, um, that's our homepage here. If I change this to index XSJS, still routes to the XSJS service, so that route works. But if I change this and I go to catalog, that's now going to my Node.js module internally, and it's being processed by the generic service handler for OData v4 that's based upon uh, core data and services, and we see our two entities of POs and PO items just like we defined them over here in the my service CDS. So POs and PO items, that's exactly what we are seeing here. Now this is OData v4, so it does look and act a little differently than OData v2. Obviously it's a newer version of the specification. There are new features and improvements, but also a little bit of differences. Now if I add dollar sign metadata on here, we're going to get a very similar looking metadata document. There we are. Uh, we're going to get a very similar metadata document, but um, we'll see a little bit later. It's actually a richer metadata document. There's much more uh, of the vocabulary information in here. This is what our Fury annotations will map to. This has uh, got more syntax and more capabilities. Uh, you see our... Um, our restrictions, uh, the insertable, update, deletable, it's in here. Our labels are, 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 are in here. We're going to see more features a little bit later in subsequent videos about how we can utilize these things. It's additional metadata that we have, particularly because that is what Fiori and SAP UI5 is designed to consume, the additional metadata that comes from OData v4 services. But we can go ahead and also test the service as well. So we'll just go... Uh, to the entity POs and similar to our OData 
v2 service we see our two records purchase order zero and one then the associated data one of the major differences even though we have an association to the uh, to the child entity it doesn't display in line with the url um, that's uh, just a design uh, difference you notice we have this odata context and metadata e tag um, that's new features here in ODATA v4. And I didn't have to specify the dollar sign format equals uh, JSON because JSON is now the default format. And, and actually, uh, Atom XML is no longer supported. Not, and that's not SAP's decisions. That's, that's changes in the standards itself. So let's go ahead and look at the items, PO items. And here we see all of our items as well. And that's really um, a simple introduction to OData v4. As I said, we're going to do more with this later. And in particular, I also want to show you how to do create and update operations. We have similar exit capabilities to what we saw with XSO data. But before we go on to those more advanced topics, I actually want to do some subsequent videos in between here that will teach you more about Node.js capabilities. So I'd really like to take advantage of some of those other advanced Node.js features when we finally get around to extending our create and update and delete uh, uh, functions with, with exits. So let's kind of put the topic of ODATA v4 aside for uh, a few videos here. We'll learn some more about Node.js, and then we'll come back to this topic. And, and uh, we'll also see more about how we can integrate this with Fury applications uh, later as well.